Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's topic is um, combinatorics, uh, problems related to combinations, uh, relatively simple problems. As usual, I do recommend you to, to do all these problems yourself first. Um, and you have to go to unizor.com uh, where this lecture is presented. Um, try to do it yourself and there are actually solutions there as well. Uh, so you might read it afterwards and then listen to the lecture just to compare your thoughts against whatever I'm presenting. You might actually get some better solution or whatever. All right, um, so problems. Problem number one. Okay, um, imagine you're playing bridge, um, the card game bridge, I mean. Uh, you have uh, 52 cards in the deck and they are dealt among four players. Each one gets 13 cards in the beginning. So you are the player, so you get your 13 cards. Question is, how many different um, sets of 13 cards you can get? This is usually called the hand. So how many different hands you can get after the dealer deals the cards among four players? So. I'm talking about only one particular player, you. So, how many different hands you can get out of 52 cards um, with your 13? Well, this is a very typical and very basic um, problem uh, on combinations because you don't really care about the order of these 13, num uh, 13 cards, right? And you don't really care about distribution of these 13 cards among other players. So, basically what I would like to say is, and we are not using any formulas, we are basically deriving the formula on the fly. Um, so, the only formula which you probably have to remember is the number of permutations. So, you have 52 cards, so you can put it in 52 factorial different orders. Well, 52 places for the card number 1, uh, 51, uh, 52 choices actually, 51 choices for card number 2, 50 for card number 3, etc., etc., down to the one choice for the 52nd card. Um, so that brings it to 52 factorial, the product of all numbers from 1 to 52. Now, are all these permutations of 52 cards give you different hands? Well, obviously not. Because the way to do it is, let's put these 52 cards in a deck, one after another, and let's say you have the first 13 cards doesn't really matter how it's dealt. Actually, it's dealt one by one, so you get every fourth one. But it doesn't really matter. You get a, a, a specific 13 uh, cards out of this 52. So, let's assume it's the first uh, 13. Now, any permutation within this uh, 13 gives you exactly the same hand. Uh, you don't really care in which order you get these cards, as long as you get exactly these cards. Similarly, any permutation among these, the rest, among the other players, you don't care about. So, again, this is 13 factorial permutations, and this is 39 factorial permutations. So you don't care about these, and with each of them you don't care about those. <coughs> So basically what I would like to say is that initial 52 factorial should be divided by 13 factorial and 39 factorial because these gives you exactly the same uh, hand. And that's the answer. Which happens to be obviously the number of combinations from, from 52 the 13s, or sometimes they write it this way, sometimes they write it this way, whatever the way they write it, that's why I prefer maybe something very simple, which is this. Okay, this is number of combinations of <coughs> 13 cards out of 52. Now, problem number two. Imagine exactly the same situation, but now not only you are interested in whatever the hand you get after the dealing, 
but every other person as well. So basically, after all 52 cards are dealt, every one of four players has some hand. So now question is, we are dealing with some kind of a distribution of 52 cards among four different players, 13 each. How many different distributions, how many different uh, combinations of the, of, of the game uh, are, are possible in this particular case? Okay, I will, uh, I will actually um, present you to two different solutions and hopefully they will get exactly the same result. All right, solution number one. Let's do exactly the same as we did in the first problem. So let's care about the first um, uh, hand. So the first player will have uh, that number of different hands. After 13, hand, uh, 13 cards are already chosen for the first player, there are 39 remaining cards which are distributed among the three other players. So the player number one will have very similarly exactly the same considerations. He will have 13 cards picked out of 39 remaining, right? After 13 out of 52 we took out for the first guy there are 39 remaining and out of these 39 remaining we have 13 uh, chosen for the player number 2. Now, the player number 3 will obviously get 26, 13 because after we out of 39 uh, cards, we already um, give to the player number one, number two. We get 13, we have 26 left, left. And then finally, out of the rest 13, we get 13 for the, third, uh, for the fourth one, right? Which is actually not a big choice because there is nothing left but these 13. So in theory, this should produce one. And it does actually. All right, so that's one type of um, calculations. Now, let's consider this problem from the other hand. We have 52 cards, and let's again use our geometric representation, 52 cards. And we divide it in four different uh, groups, 13 cards each. Now, any distribution of these 52, and there are 52 different ways of ordering these 52 cards gives certain distribution of the cards among the four players but all the distributions within this group of 13 so all the permutations and all permutations of these and all permutations within this group only and all permutations within this group only none of these actually changes the uh, the, the, the total distribution because the cards will remain within the same player as they were before so number of these is 13 factorial. With each of them, we can have as many uh, permutations of this guy, which is also 13 factorial, and this 13 factorial, and this 13 factorial. So we have to multiply them all together, because all of them give exactly permutations within each one of these groups, gives exactly the same thing. So we have to divide it by 13 factorial, and 13 factorial, and 13 factorial, and 13 factorial. Right? So it's 52 factorial divided by 13 factorial power of 4. So that's another way to approach it. Well, let's check if they're the same. Okay. I don't remember the formula, but I already so many times derived it that I remember it now by now. So it's 52 factorial divided by 13 factorial and 52 minus 13, which is 39 factorial. Now, this is uh, 52, sorry, 39 factorial.
divided by 13 factorial and 26 factorial. This is 26 factorial divided by 13 factorial and 13 factorial. And the last one is 13 factorial divided by 13 factorial and 0 factorial, right? Zero factorial is one. So what we have remaining? We have 52. We have 52 factorial. 13, 13, 13, 13. Four times exactly the same as this one. Right? So we got the same answer. You can choose any solution you would like. Personally, I prefer the second one. Because it has this geometric representation. So to, to count how many different distributions are among four players, you put all the cards in some order, and there are 52 factorial, and then you permute everything which doesn't really change the whole distribution. So within each player, 13 factorial must permutations must be counted as one. And the same thing to the second one, and the third, and the fourth. OK. Uh, let's go on. Let's consider you have a keyboard menu. Uh, keyboard uh, to the computer keyboard. I mean, I mean a computer keyboard, right. Computer keyboard. And uh, it has different keys which have functional, actually, uh, uh, functionality. Functional functionality, right. Uh, what I mean is there is a control key. Remember this. There is an alt key. There is a function key, there is a shift key, and there is something else, because I remember five, menu key. Some kind of a menu key. On Microsoft, uh, there is some kind of a, uh, a Microsoft uh, running operating system, there is a key which has this Microsoft logo, for instance. So, we have five different functional keys. Their purpose is to not to enter some like digit or, or, or a letter or something like this, but some functional purpose. Now, you um, probably know from, uh, again, usual, usage of the personal computers, for Microsoft operating system, you have to press, press Control, Alt, Delete, for instance, to reboot the machine, right? Or something like this, or get to the main menu, whatever. So you have to press three buttons. So my task is, I have five different function keys. Now, if I'm using a combination of simultaneous pressing of three of these keys, how many different functions I can accomplish? So control alt delete is one, control menu func is another, func shift alt is another, etc. So how many different combinations of three keys simultaneously pressed, I can get from these five functional keys. Well, this is again a typical uh, problem related to combinations. Uh, I have five choices and I have to pick three of them. So it's number of combinations of three out of five. Again, how can we basically derive this? Very simply. We have five, and let's say you put them in the order, and you cut it, the first three in the beginning. So, how many different sets of the first three you can get? Well, obviously the five factorial is the total number, right? But since these can be permuted in any order, and they actually constitute exactly the same combination of three keys, I have to divide it by three factorial, and, and then I have to divide it by two factorial, because any permutation of these, which I'm not using, also uh, constitute exactly the same uh, set of uh, three numbers in the beginning, three, three keys at the beginning, right? So that's the answer, which is exactly the formula for number of combinations of uh, three out of five. Next. Next, you have a company which uh, employs 10 managers, uh, 30 programmers, 
and uh, 20 data entry operators. That's the stuff. That's what they have. This is the company. Now there is a special project, and this special project requires two managers, six programmers, and four data entry operators. So the question is, for this particular project, how many different teams can we construct from these employees if we need this number of specialties within this particular team? Well, the answer is, you have to pick two managers out of ten, and this can be done in this number of different choices, right? Now, with each of them, you can have six out of 30, and with each of programmers, and with each of them, from 20 data entry operators, we have to choose four. And that's supposed to be the answer, right? Or, if you wish, we can go into the factorials, um, and they don't want actually to do it. Like 10 factorials divided by 2 factorials times A factorials, etc., etc. So that's the answer. Next problem. Next problem, you have five tennis players. And they have to play with each other, let's say, one match. One match. So, question is, how many different matches can be played? Well, the, um, again, it's a, it's a regular problem uh, related to combinations. It's the question of how many pairs we can choose from five different objects. Because every pair constitutes a match between two different uh, uh, tennis players. And we don't really care about the sequence. If first plays with the second, then the second plays with the first at the same time. And we are saying that only one match is supposed to be done. So basically, the answer is supposed to be uh, uh, out of five players, we have to choose two. So how many different combinations we can have, which is actually 5 times 4 divided by this, which is 10. Now, there is another way to approach this, and it's always good actually to approach the same combinatorics problem from m m more than one different uh, direction. Well, the direction is the following. You can think about the first player. He can play with the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Right? Then you can take the second player and he can play with the third, the fourth, and the fifth. With the first, it's already played, right? So here you have four, here you have three. Now the third player can have four, number, f number four and number five players, because all the previous one, three and two is already played, three and one is already played. So this is two. And finally, number four plays with number five, which is only one game. And some of these gives exactly ten. Yet another approach, which is probably also very interesting, a geometrical approach. Let's position our players as a pentagon. We have five players, right? And let's connect them. So this is a pentagon. And these are diagonals, right? Here. Now we connect it all with all. Now, how many different connections we have? We have five sides of this pentagon and five diagonals. Gives you ten connections, right? So that's yet another way to approach, and this is the same number. And again, it's very good actually in combinatorics to to check the problem from different directions because, as I was saying before, combinatorics problems are very difficult to check. Uh, if you are solving an equation, you can have the number, which is the result of your solution, substituted back into the equation and either you see it's equal or not equal. I mean, identify identity or not identity. Here you cannot really check so easily. The, the only way you can have is to approach the problem from a different angle. Maybe direct calculation, as I did here, 
or some other geometrical calculation, whatever. So the more ways you can, uh, you, you can approach the problem to get the same answer, the more you are sure that the answer is correct. It's very important in combinatorics. Okay, and the last problem which I wanted to talk about is... <coughs> All right, let's say you have a fisherman which has caught 10 fishes. 10 fishes. Now, we have two different scenarios. Scenario number one, he eats three fishes. One for breakfast. one for lunch and one for dinner question is how many different day meals he can have if he has 10 fishes and he's using one for breakfast one for lunch and one for dinner well the answer is obviously he has 10 choices for the breakfast, right? Now one fish is already eaten, so there are only 9 left, 9 choices for the lunch, and 8 choices for the dinner, and we have to multiply it, and this is 72, 720. So he has 720 ways to eat 3 fishes during the day, out of these 10. What if he doesn't want to eat these fishes? He wants to throw the three fishes back into the lake where he caught it from, for whatever reason. Well, this is a different, because in this case, the order is important. In the case when he throws away, it doesn't really matter which fish is the first, which fish is the second, and which is the third, which he picks for throwing away. Which means in this case, In case when he throws away, he actually has number of combinations of 3 out of 10, which is 10 times 9 times 8 divided by 1, 2, and 3, which is 120. So this is the number of ways he can pick 3 fishes and throw them away. And this is the number of ways he can pick three fishes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner separately. And the difference is only because this is an ordered set and this is not. This is basically a partial permutation and this is the, the combinations. Okay, this is it. Uh, that's all my six problems I wanted to present to you today. Uh, suggested to go back to unisor.com and uh, go through these problems by yourself. Don't look at the, the solutions and try to refresh your memory to come up with the same solutions. Thank you very much and good luck.